were it not for grace. Thank you, Sister B. Appreciate that message and song. I have to tell you, it's one of my favorites to remind me of a loving God that did not have to do what he's done for us, that we may live eternally with him. Isn't God good? Praising his holy name for being such a wonderful, loving God. Beloved, there's a lot on the plate once again to share. I want to welcome all of our visitors visiting with us and those who are watching on live stream. And I'd like to acknowledge my brother and sister who's visiting with us today. I'm so grateful to have them, the Derrits, with us today. Beloved, our God is not happy. He's not happy because he wants us home with him. But the question is, how bad do we want to go home to be with Jesus? When we look at the condition of this world, when we see what's taking place in our government and when we see what's taking place even in many of our churches, Lord have mercy. Unfortunately, brothers and sisters, too many people are looking at the church as their heaven on earth. And they're trying to hold on to certain things about the church that they want to make the church the way they think it ought to be. But I want you to know God's church has a purpose. It has a what, everybody? for being in existence in the community that it's in. You see, our God, he's coming soon. He has proclaimed that I will come and I will not tarry. You know the old the little game that we used to play when we were little? Hide and seek. Ready or not, here I come. The question is, are you and I really serious about being ready when Jesus is coming? when he's going to come. When he come, are we going to be ready? There's a message I spoke on not long ago, and the title was, Will You Be Ready? And many people are afraid of the thought of being ready because they are wondering, how good can I be for God? But let me tell you, all he wants is your whole heart. It's no time to play games. It's no time to Think about the fact that once you know the name of Jesus, you think you're going to be saved in his kingdom. It's not about once saved, always saved. There's such a thing called a backslider. And there's such a thing of those who are in Christ can lose their way. Brothers and sisters, you and I must be consistent in following God. God says, I made a promise and in my in this day, in the last days, I have proclaimed through my servant, the messenger, from the great controversy, page 606, God says, don't worry, I'm going to finish my work. I'm coming soon, and I need a people that's dead serious about being ready when I come and being on the front line to do my bidding. So here in the great book, great controversy, page 606, We'll counsel, thus the message of the third angel will be proclaimed as the time comes for it to be given with greatest power. What kind of power? The Lord will work through humble instruments. Notice what it says, humble instruments, leading the minds of those who consecrate themselves to his service. The laborers will be qualified rather by the unction of his spirit than by the training of literary institutions. There's a lot of people, they take pride in degrees in school and all of these things when we go to school and get an education, they, yes, they have their place, but too many people are worshiping degrees. And God never said degrees, he said spiritual gifts. Too many people have degrees and they are not doing God's work. So rather than by the literary institution, God says, I will give my men of faith and prayer will be constrained to go forth with holy zeal, declaring the words which God gives them. God says, I'm going to give my power to those that are dead serious, those who are not just trying to play church, but be serious about 
the mission, and the movement. So God's message to all of us, especially myself at this hour, is entitled, A Place for You in Christian Witnessing. Would you pray with me? Father God, take charge of this vessel. Bind the enemy of souls that we may gain the message and be fulfilled with, with your Holy Spirit to go forward with holy zeal to do the task you have placed before us. Thank you for doing all these things. In Jesus' name, let everyone say. Amen. Beloved, I want to share a few thoughts with you from this great church text, should I say, having a place in Christian witnessing. Those of you who have permit, permitted your Bibles to come with you, I'd like for you to share it with someone that may not have a Bible. I'd like for you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 25. What book did I say? Matthew, Matthew chapter 25. Let's take a look now at verse, verses 14 through 30. I will read the first verse, and I'd like for the congregation to read the second and so on and so forth until we conclude. From this day forth, the Lord has impressed my heart to let the church know I want you to take notes when you hear this preacher preach. You don't need to take my word for it. You want to take God's word, amen? amen. Check on this preacher with God's word. I want you to be educated. I want you to know the truth for yourself. One day you'll get cornered and there won't be a pastor or a preacher or a teacher or an elder around to help you out. So it's time for us to know God's word that we may hide it in our hearts that we may not sin against him. Amen. The scripture begins this way. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Congregation. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. But he that had received the, the one and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slowful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. Altogether, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Lord have mercy. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand something here. Here Christ on the Mount of Olives had spoken to his disciples about his second advent to the world. He had specified now certain signs that were to show when his coming was near. 
And he said, Watch ye therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Then he showed what it means to watch for his coming. You see, brothers and sisters, the time is to be spent not in idle waiting, but diligent working. Diligent what? This is the lesson Christ taught in the parable of the talents. And again, the kingdom of heaven, he said, is as a man traveling now into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his good. And we see that he gave one five talents, another two and another one to every man according to his several ability. And straightway he took his journey. You see, get it now. The man traveling into a far country represents Christ. Represents who? Who, when speaking this parable, was soon to depart from this earth up into heaven. The bond servants or the slaves of the parable represents we, us, the followers of Christ. You see, we're not our own. We have been bought with a price. We owe God our lives completely. Amen? Amen? Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, looking at verse 20, it says, We have been bought not with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus. Question, does that mean anything to you? Notice what else it says in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. God has gone all out for us, and there's a purpose for our existence. There's a purpose for why we are here, especially in this vineyard, brothers and sisters. Notice what it says in Christ's Object Lessons 326. The counsel is given to us. All men, how many men? All men have been bought with this infinite price by pouring the whole treasury of heaven into this world, by giving us in Christ all heaven. God has purchased the will, the affections, the mind, the soul of every human being, whether believers or even unbelievers. All men, how many? Are the Lord's property. All are called to do service for him. For the manner in which they have met this claim, all will be required to render an account at the great judgment day. The anti-typical day of atonement has already begun, brothers and sisters. This is the time that we must render an account for the gifts and, and talents God has given us. But you might ask the question, how on earth can I work for God? I don't know what to do. We're looking now, church family, to lift this church up and turn it down the direction of becoming a true evangelistic center, community service center, reaching every soul in this community, even in the neighborhoods where we live. Are you with me on that? You may ask the question, well, what can be done to allow each and every one of us to participate in this movement of finishing God's word? Well, here it is. Evangelism Center training coming up on January the 25th and February 1. And here's what we're going to do. It's the blueprint of soul winning the church as an evangelistic center. It's not just coming here to have church. Come on and say amen. amen. I said before I can stay at home and worship God under a tree on the Sabbath, but we have a purpose being in this vineyard. So our church can become an evangelistic year-round evangelistic center. So what must the church do? It's three things. How many? Understand the difference between the church work and the work of the church. Church work, I'm an usher, I'm a deacon, I'm a deaconess, I'm a Sabbath school superintendent. The work of the church is going out there and sharing your faith, telling people about Jesus and his saving grace. Amen? Amen. But guess what? If we don't do the work of the church, pretty soon... There won't be anybody left to do church work. Come on and say amen. Develop an evangelistic culture. Every single thing that we do, brothers and sisters, needs to have an evangelistic culture and outreach arm to it, if you please. We need to be willing to change our paradigm. Some of us are so stuck in our traditions, we can't let nothing happen unless it goes the old way. Come on and say amen. Nobody can come in and many will go out. We have to change the paradigm of how we operate, willing to change the way we operate on a daily basis. Get this now. 
every church should be open seven days a week like Walmart. Don't get quiet on me. Every church should be involving every member. What did I say? Every member, from the little tots all the way down to the seasoned members. Someone needs to have a part to play. Everybody. So what does this look like? It's a two-part training. On the 25th of January, we're going to look at seven presentations, and we're going to go through each one. And then on the 1st of February, we're going to implement all of the different ministries. But get this. Most, if not all, of the ministries is already in place in the church, but it's just self-serving. It's not outreach. We're going to connect it and make it outreach to where every ministry, what did I say? Every ministry will be winning souls through their ministry. Come on and say amen. I thought I'd get a lot of amen than that. So that first part, the charge. The second part, church member team ministries. You're going to be able to choose which area you like to work in. Mastering field visitation. I call these the Marines. These are the people that will be going out every week. Amen? Friendship evangelism. Becoming a loving church. Question, are we a loving church? Are we? Is it by the life we live and the love we give, or is it by lip service and not life service? Huh? Health, the entering wedge. Some of us are so unhealthy, but it's time to get healthy. Come on and say amen. The need, serving the needs of the community, retaining the harvest. I'm tired of baptizing people as an evangelist. They come in the front door and they don't, they don't stick. They're gone the next week. I want to show you how to keep people, amen? Then training the church to do an evangelistic campaign even without a pastor. Woo! Can you imagine? See, too many churches say, we can't do anything until we get a pastor. That always lets me know, even when they get a pastor, they're still not going to do anything. So therefore, we're going to train the church how to do evangelism all on its own. So you don't just lean on one person. We're going to lean on each other, the crowd. Come on and say amen. So the charge will show you the entire church, the charge and push to do the Great Commission, church member ministries review, this session would also help every member to be able to choose which area they'd like to work in. And of course, field door-to-door, master field evangelism, how to knock on the door to pray and all those things, how to visit missing members, you name it, five different categories. And then, of course, friendship evangelism, how to share the gospel with your family. A lot of our family members are outside of our office safety, amen? Friends, neighbors, co-workers, amen? See, you and I, we have the power of choice, like Adam and Eve, we can ask for the power of the Holy Spirit, but then there's another power we have that we don't even think about, and we use it every single day, and that is the power of influence. We influence somebody towards heaven or hell every day in our relationship with them. So when it comes to our family, friends, neighbors, and coworkers, we're going to sh- teach you how to share your faith to these individuals because it's about relationships. What did I say? All right, health the entering wedge. We're going to hit this community very hard with the health message. Amen? Then we're going to retain the harvest, as we say. Now, here's the 27 ministries that we're going to be implementing. Don't get afraid right now, okay? Because I'm sure a lot of people are saying, man, that's a lot of ministry, but we only have three people. Right? No. Whatever is signed up for, that's what we're going to implement. Are you with me? So what is the first ministry that you can take a look at to be a part of? It's the Bible school. Every church should have a Bible school. Mail correspondence, you you name it, mailing things back and forth. The next one we're looking at here is the Bible study team. We have a Bible worker, but I see nowhere in Scripture that one person is supposed to be teaching the truth to people from a church. No, every one of us, what did I say? Needs to be sharing our faith, using the Word of God, teaching people, especially the elders. Hello, the deacons. Hello, the deaconess. Hello, starting with that core group. And then on down, amen? Every one of us should be sharing our faith using the word of God. Being able to teach, as it says in 1 Timothy 3. So the Bible study team will do a lot of different things. I'm not going to describe all of it, but then we have the family life ministries. What? You mean to tell me you can win souls through family life? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Be a part of the Family Life Ministries team, and you'll see how, when you take this training, you'll see how you can grow your church through family life. 
Then we have family addiction support. That's taboo. Many of us don't want to talk about our family members that's hooked on drugs and alcohol. But then we're going to have a ministry here to help those individuals and their families. Amen. Amen. Don't you want to help these kind of people? Some of us sitting up here right now need this help. Amen. God knows it. You know it. Open up. Get some help. So we want to help the people in the community with these issues. Golden Agers, that's the seasoned members. We're going to train and teach you how to actually win souls from the, win the Golden Agers from this community. Amen? You'll have that particular ministry to do. I won't go into all the details. Guest services and transportation. A lot of people don't even, can't even get to church, but we're going to implement this. Then we're looking at health reform team, as I mentioned. Then, of course, we'll have the field territory team knocking on 10 doors at the church every Sabbath. Praise God. Interest management team. Well, how does that work? Well, everybody that walks through these doors, we're going to have their information to market to them everything that we do in this church. Everything that we do in this church needs to be marketed to this community. You get all this junk mail in the mail from all these different stores. Why not the people that we should allow them to receive our mail? Amen. Same thing. So missing members, church visitors, community field contacts, individuals on the prayer list, altar call respondents, seminar attendees, Bible students, Bible study graduates, baptismal candidates, and also, of course, the new converts, keeping all this data going on. Brothers and sisters, this is going to explode with growth, okay, if we work. So here it is, Children Outreach Ministries. What? Yes. As a leader of a ministry, we implemented this in a church in 2008 in January. November of that same year, they had 41 baptisms. No amens. 19 of the 41 was from the children's ministry. Still no amens. Come on, wake up. Hello, lights. <laughs> Men's ministry. Men in this church need to come together in this ministry and reach out to the community of the men and young men in this community. When you have your special day, they're the ones who are on program testifying what this men's ministries group has done for them in their life through Christ. Amen? Same thing. Missing member task force. We have a lot of missing members, amen? I checked the books. It's 299. No, it's not 299 people in here. Amen? So now there are missing members. So this group will go after and nourish and lead back to the fold the missing members. Come on and say amen. amen. Neighborhood ministry, these are small groups. You want to have a small group in your home? We're going to show you how to do that and how to connect that to the church. Then we have prayer ministry team. We have that here already. Amen? The problem is most of us are not, not working with the prayer ministry team. We're not praying. Oh, that's the ministry. They do that in the mother's room and, you know, they come and pray down front, you know. Let me tell you something. All of us, what did I say? All. Need to be a part of the prayer ministry team. Can I get a witness today? Prison ministry. We don't have a prison ministry team here, but we can develop one if someone signs up for it. There's a lot of things that we can do. There's many prisoners coming out of the church, out of the prisons, going into God's church once they learn this truth. Then, of course, public literature distribution team. Our young people love this one. Everything. What did I say? Everything that happens in this church should be marketed to the community. You're tired of getting the junk mail from Walmart? It's time for them to get our mail to inviting them. Every time somebody darkens the doors here, they need to get some literature, knowing what's going on. We got to get this social media thing taken to the next level, amen, because we're about finishing God's work. I want Jesus to come. I'm tired of the high cost of low living in California. Listen now, we got a market out there in the community. Then you have the public relations ministry. These are the individuals that put together all the marketing tools, all the flyers, all the stuff on the internet, amen. You can be a part of that team if you have that skill, amen. Sabbath school action teams, what is this? We're going to build up the Sabbath school where it looks like divine worship hour. Come on, say amen. Somebody! So goes the Sabbath school, so goes prayer meetings, so is your church. Okay? That's how you can judge where your church really is. Okay? If the Sabbath school is empty and the prayer meeting is empty, that's really significant to that real health of your church. That's for a spiritual commitment. Amen? Amen? Now, many people say, you know, I want to do something. I don't know what to do. Here's the day that you're meeting what you can do. Amen? Let's move on. Save to serve social services. Of course, that is your community service program. 
We are to do the work. We do the missions on third Sabbath, but we got to take this to another level, helping people with jobs, how temporary housing, and so on and so forth. All the humanitarian felt needs. Amen. Then special language ministry, Tagalog ministry. If you hear me, this is your part. Come on and say amen. You're not left out. You're in it also. Everything that we're doing in English is to be done in this language for the people in this community. Come on and say amen. amen. Then we're moving to the spiritual guardian team. When I was baptized, I had a spiritual guardian. I called them lifeguards, somebody to look over me besides Jesus in the church to help people in their spiritual growth and their spiritual walk. Amen. We're going to give you more detail on that. Women's ministry, just like men's ministry, reaching the women and the young ladies in this community. We're going to show you how to do that with the evangelistic arm. Youth and young adult outreach. Everything that happens for the youth in this church should be marketed to every youth in this community. Amen. We want to fill this church with non-members every week. We want to get to the point where this church is having an evangelistic meeting every Sabbath morning. Did that scare you? Come on now. The purpose of the church is to finish the work so we can go home to our real, to our real home. Amen? Amen? This is what we need to do. Music ministry. Now, this church is not short on music, musicians and musical singers. Amen? The preacher can sing, but I don't have to. It's 40 others. <laughs> Amen? But we can take this ministry to the convalescent homes, to the hospitals, to the, to the prisons, and all of that. We can extend our music ministry to the community. What do you say? We're going to do that. Singles ministries. What? We're going to have a singles ministry? Oh, yes. I'm going to draw all the singles from everywhere. We're going to fill this church with the singles because we're going we're gonna to build up this church and win souls through our singles ministry. Those of you who are single, let me hear you say amen. Ah, yeah. right, mostly ladies, I tell you. <laughs> amen. Couples ministry, couples outreach ministries. Never heard of that before, Pastor. Oh, yes. We're going to win other couples who are not of our faith to the church through the couples ministry. Come on and say amen. Finance stewardship, this is the last one. We have a treasury department and a treasury team. We're going to put on financial seminars for the community, showing them how to balance the checkbook and all those other types of seminars, amen, dealing with finances. Plus, it's for us as well because some of us are not really returning a 10% tithe. Come on and say amen. We want to help you out. Amen. Beloved, the God of heaven is calling each and every one of us to do his work. There's no excuse. Each and every one of us have now an opportunity to participate in one of these ministries. Most of these ministries are already in place. They just do not have the evangelistic arm outreach for souls to come in. Every ministry, if you think about it, at least 20 of these ministries are ones to be outreached. Guess what? If every one of these ministries... When 20 souls per year, you're looking at 400 people added to your church in one year. Oh, y'all ain't excited. In one year, 400 people through the ministries of the church without ever doing an evangelistic campaign. The question is, are we dead serious about using our talents for God? That's the question, brothers and sisters. So as we see here now, we're going to do the breakouts on February 1. You're going to have different ministry teachers and it's going to be, this sanctuary will be filled up with teachers and breakout groups. So where we're going to run each training for each ministry to two to three times. So that if you sign up for more than one, you get to rotate and still catch the others that you would like to participate in. Amen. Amen. Then we're looking at materials provided. You would have a manual to show you exactly what to do. Plus, we're going to give you six months of training where you'll have a curriculum to follow for six months in addition to what you will add to it as a team of people on, in that ministry to continue on. Amen? Amen? So we have a leader and the team members. We're going to have the territory maps, and here's the reporting system that we have here. The reporting system that we're going to have quality control. Nobody's going to slip through the cracks. Amen? I won't read all this. We'll get it later. And here's all the ministries, and then you have the leader, which is the evangelism coordinator, which is your personal ministry leader in ministry. We're going to show you how to do that. And there's a system that I want to get to called the farmer's method. What did I say? This farmer's method is like this, okay? Someone visits our church, and they come to the health program that's on, on, on uh, what you say, the fourth Sabbath. We get their information. Their name goes on the soil preparation list, Okay? The day that they decide to take Bible studies, their name goes on the seed sowing list. Amen? 
Then when they take the Bible studies and they're not ready to get baptized, they go on the cultivation list because we're still working with them. We're still inviting them. They're still a part of our faith, our church, amen, our fellowship. And then the day that they want to be baptized, they go on the reaping list. The what list? The reaping list. And then after that, once they're baptized, we store and preserve them by training them to be a part of one of the ministries and being a part of the mission of the church. Are you with me? So that's what we're going to do. Here's a system here that, that shows how that works. And every ministry will now be tied together, working together with the interests that they're working with. We'll do that. I'm not going to read all this. I just want to give you a highlight of it. But there's a reporting system. Every ministry would have a mailbox. The interest will be coming into your mailbox. You will be following up with those interests that have the interest of the area you're serving. And it'll be done by computer or hard, hard copy. Amen. God has a mission. Now, all of this comes from the book Evangelism, Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, and the book of Acts. All organized in a way that we can finish this work. And when, we, when the bride has made herself ready, he will come. Amen? So the lead workers, the church pastor, you're not going to go any higher than your leader. And I'm dead serious. If I have to do evangelism by myself, this is going to happen. Amen? Elders, deacons, deaconess, personal ministry leader, all right? When it comes to these other ministries, the community service leader, prayer coordinator, prison leader, youth leader, communications leader, health and temperance leader, Pathfinder, junior youth, both leaders of the children and the junior youth ministry. Everybody is involved. Nobody is left out. What do you say? Amen. You see, brothers and sisters, we got to get serious about this thing. You're going to get consistent support. The Lord calls for pastors, teachers, and evangelists from door to door. His servants are to proclaim the message of salvation. This is what we must do. The elders, the deacons, and the deaconess are to support and lead out in the outreach ministries, especially the Bible study team as it says in 1 Timothy 3, and this church can become evangelism center, and the coordinator, of course, would be the personal ministry leader, but also all of us working together. So a faithful church, what kind of church? Faithful. Will produce a consistent harvest year-round. We will have baptisms every month. Amen. What did I say? Every month. Every month. You would never really have to do an evangelistic campaign, brothers and sisters, if you follow this blueprint. The problem that we have, we need more people to work it. Now, what we train you to do, whatever signed up for, those are the only ministries we will implement. So don't get afraid of the long list, amen? But I'm really looking for those that's going to knock on doors and give Bible studies to, to connect with the community also, amen? So when we do this, we can go and add to the church and we can keep them, what do you say? God is calling us to do this. So let's get going, and after baptism, it's victory at last. We can go home. When the bride has made herself ready, he's going to come. What do you say? Now, let me draw your attention as I wrap this up. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, what book did I say? Chapter 5, looking at verse 15. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. We're not to live to ourselves. That's what many of us are doing. We as human beings, especially those of us who are not born again, we are selfish. We're not thinking about anybody else. So here it is. As the parable went, goes before the, at the beginning of this message, to his servants Christ commits his goods. That means the talents that he's given you. Something to be put to use for him. He gives every man his work, every woman her work. Each has a place in the eternal plan of heaven. You believe that? Amen. Each is to work in cooperation with Christ for the salvation of souls. Not more surely is the place prepared for us in the heavenly mansions than is a special place designated right here on earth where we are to work for God. You see, my brothers and sisters, the greatest failure we could face, if not the greatest sin, would be to miss altogether God's purpose for our lives. There's a special place designated here on earth where God wants to, us to serve and work for him. So what are you passionate about? What is your passion? Is it gossiping? If it is, start telling your testimony about Jesus, amen? You like to talk, so talk about that, amen? Amen? But then you may feel like you are disqualified. Well, let's take a look at a fellow named Jeremiah. Jeremiah 
The name means sent by the Lord as the lightning is sent by the cloud and the arrow is sent by the bow. This man, Jeremiah, was designated, called and chosen by God, and God sent him. He was as a light beam in a time of prevailing darkness. See, when you preach present truth, uncut light against darkness today, you are a strange preacher. I know I'm strange to a lot of people. Somebody else says I'm like a can of raid in a house full of roaches. But I tell you what, brothers and sisters, it's time for us to tell people the truth so that we can be saved. Amen. It's time for us to give the truth. You see, God called Jeremiah and he lifted him up so that his voice might be the voice of God against the sins of Israel. People need to know this. And because he didn't say what the people wanted him to say, he was misunderstood. We get that. Jeremiah was forced to be counted amongst the traitors. You're not one of us. His own people for whom he meant nothing but good considered him to be an enemy because his message was too straight. God needs a lot of Jeremiah's in the church today. Come on and say amen. Therefore, Jeremiah, brothers and sisters, was rejected by the very people to whom he was sent. Brothers and sisters, God's will often seems incredible to the unsanctified heart. Oh, yeah, Lord, you really want me to do this? You see, if we're not walking with God, we don't understand what he's doing, and the wisdom of God appears to be foolishness unto us. We don't understand. So the truth is, we can become so accustomed to following the wisdom of the world and the logic of the world's great thinkers and the rationalism by which the world is motivated that we can come to the place where right seems wrong and wrong seems right. Can I get a witness again today? Church, we must realize that God's way is not our way. This is why he says right here in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God has a different way of doing things. So a logical question could be asked here. Why would God choose a man like Jeremiah amongst all the people of Judah? I want you to think about something. We're going somewhere with this. We have to understand that God doesn't look at people the way we do. Hello. The way a person is dressed, the way a person looks, we do a thumbs down. But God looks on the heart, not the outward appearance. Come on and say amen. You see, there seems to be nothing very special about Jeremiah. He was an ordinary man with many negative traits. But God's chosen instruments in all of the ages, brothers and sisters, though they appear to others to be unqualified or not credible, are cut out to do the purpose that God has chose for them. Who would have chosen Peter, James, or John, the sons of thunder, always wanting to fight somebody? Who would have chosen Ellen White with merely a third grade education? So God chose Jeremiah, and as his disciples, he chooses all of us today. Now, here's the text that really is heavy, so so heavy that I can't lift it. And the text says, many are called, but few are chosen. And a lot of us make the mistake and say, well, God didn't choose me. No, God is calling everybody. What did I say? The problem is what the text is really saying. Everybody is called, but only a few would choose to do it. Think about it. Only a few would choose to serve God faithfully. The first thing Jeremiah did, like so many people, he disqualified himself. Yes, he did. Saying, why me? As he says in Jeremiah 1, verse 6. I can't speak. I'm only a child, Lord. Why are you calling on me? That might be in some of your minds right now. That's the way we are. Let somebody else do it. Church, many times, the quality and the attributes of God are attributed to a man because of his eloquence. Some people won't listen to a preacher if he has notes like me. I don't care as long as it's got substance. Come on and say amen. amen. You see, an eloquent man is not always the most gifted. They could be lying. Come on and say amen. But we must not despair because of an apparent disqualification by man. God has a place for you and a place for me. God, what God demands is not so much qualifications, church, but a willingness. A what, everybody? A willingness to serve and to help. Oh, yes. Qualifications can be developed, but God has chosen us because he sees not as man sees. 
Some of us, we hear somebody get voted into a position and we say, oh, they shouldn't have that. You don't know what God is doing. Come on and say amen. In Jeremiah 1, 4 and 5, it says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Don't care what anybody else says, I called you. God knew us before we were born. And he knows and he has our destiny in his hands. Oh, yes, he does. Yes, he does. So if we stay connected with him, not to Satan, we will be in the will of God for our lives. And let us understand what our two most important duties are as disciples of Christ. And there in that great book, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, 13 and 14, where it says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and give glory to him and keep his commandments, for this is the duty, the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment, yes, with every secret thing, whether it be good or even whether it be evil. And the second quote, which is our scripture reading, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son, teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I will be with you always. He threw that in because you know the devil's going to mess with us. And we need to know that God is with us even when the devil messes with us. Come on and say amen. Our church, we must follow these duties and no one else can take our place. No one can take our place. We may fail God, but no one else can take our place. You and I have a special place in the movement of finishing God's work. The thoughts and the ways of God in relation to his creatures are above our finite minds. We don't get it, but God has it in his hand. Trust him. But we may be assured that his children will be brought to fill the very place, yes, in which they are qualified and able now to accomplish the very work committed to their hands. And if we will submit to God, oh yes, then his beneficial plans may not be frustrated by the perversity of man. We are all messed up. And please realize this as I bring this down. Here and now, that a life lived totally for Jesus, totally for who? Will produce God's place for you. Yes, Christian witnessing, what did I say? Has more impact of the Christian life lived than any Bible study. A life of love and ministering to others' needs. Then when people see that, oh yes, they will be reassured that there is a God. And they will want what you have, oh yes. And that's the time when the word of God will flourish in their hearts. And if you want to know where your place is, huh? You must consort with holy angels. Oh, yes. And go to the places where angels are present, where the Holy Spirit is an abundant. It's an abundant presence of the Holy Spirit. And that's places where there's no contention and division and inner fighting. No, they don't stay there. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to have charge of our lives so the angels can stay with us. You see, brothers and sisters, and that's right here where the word of God is being discussed. This is the place for us. And cry out to Jesus and he will show you the place that he has for you. So, brothers and sisters, as we sit here this afternoon and, and if you find God's place for you, he will produce a variance in your plans and thoughts in place of your employment. God will produce a variance even in your homes. Oh, yes. In the car we drive, in the neighborhood where we live, God will use you even there. Even the children that we bring into this world, God will make a difference by his power that is reflected through our lives. And because we say we are a Christian and we believe we are, let's not profess and not display that we are a child of God. Division and confusion, let's get together. The greatest medicine for a sick church is the work of God. No amen. The people in our home, our neighborhood, on our jobs ought to know about Jesus Christ and his saving power and that he's coming again to redeem his children from this sin-cursed earth. By the life we live and the love we give, they'll find that out. And if the people in our homes don't know Jesus, if the people in our neighborhoods and on our jobs that we've been on for such a long time don't know Jesus, beloved, with God in the midst of our lives, we will make a difference in this world. Yes, we will for Christ. And sad to say, though, many in the church who are called to help in the ministry of soul winning, 
still will not answer the call. And remember, many are called, but only a few will choose to work for God. And God has never really done anything with a crowd, but I declare myself to be committed to be a part of the few. What about you? So don't lose your gift to somebody else. You and I, each and every one of us, have a gift that God has given us. And if we don't use it for God, if we bury it and blame God for all the issues that we have going on in our lives, God will take our gift and give it to those who are working and using their gift for him. Come on and say amen. Now here's the counsel from Revelation chapter 3, looking at verse 10 and 11. And when this thing wraps down and it closes out, God says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And here's the one that really stuck to me. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take your crown. See, if you don't use your gifts for God, your crown will be taken. Your crown will be taken, brothers and sisters. This is not my words. This is the word of God. So let us follow the light God has given her, us in 2020 to finish his work. And he will lead us to that place that he has for you. That's all of us, amen? And it's this place right here, Pasadena SDA. Come on and say amen. amen. This is the place that he's led you. And if you have been taking Bible studies and you have learned God's remnant, precious truth, present truth, God is calling you right now not just to be satisfied in knowing what he's taught you, but he wants you to take your stand and join God's remnant church who's about the business of sharing the gospel in his true light to people that's out in the community that's in darkness. He doesn't want you to sit on your hands and get all you can and not to commit to God. It's more than just going to church. It is working for God, and God has called you you know who you are if you have been taking studies and you are not taking a stand to be rebaptized or even joining this church by profession of faith. See, I'm not here to play games, brothers and sisters. I don't have that kind of time. I'm serious about God's work and God's will. And I want a people that is about the same thing that we can finish God's work. What do you say? So don't lose the only gift that you think that you have because of not using it for God. You see, he's coming again, brothers and sisters. He's coming again. Oh, yes. And as the music plays softly, thank you, my brother. The question is, will you be ready to go home with him because you've completed your work? Will you be ready to go home with him? Will you? You see, we're going to either be a soul winner for God or a soul winner for the devil. There's no middle ground. None. And look what Christ has done for us on this cross. The God of heaven is sick and tired of people who's not serious. He's looking for a people that's dead serious. So on the 25th of this month, we're going to start this. And if there's members of this church that you know that's not here, that should have ought to been here, forgive, forgive me for the grammar. Let them know what's about to take place here. Let them know. Because even if it's three people, we're going forward. We're going forward. And God is going to take care of business. And when it happens, even with three people, you will know nobody but Jesus. But I want to be hooked up with the few. What about you? I want to go forward and do God's work. I don't have time for division, contention, and all these things that draw us apart. It's about God's work. And when we go to work for God, guess what? All of those things get put to the side. See, the devil already knew what was coming to Pasadena. So he's scheming up things to try to distract it and detract it and, 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 and keep it from going smooth. But guess what? It's a left-handed compliment from the devil when we go through the troublous waters of trying to do God's work and we are attacked from even within. We thank God because the devil sees a threat. And I praise God for being here. I love this church. My wife and I, we pray for this church. We give our all for this church. I do nothing half, half done. No, no, no. Not going to do it. If I'm going to be at this church, I'm going to work it. I'm going to work all of y'all like Mississippi spiritual slaves. Come on. 
Oh yeah, we're going to finish this job. We're going to take care of God's business. We're going to be about our father's business. And if you're not here consistently, guess what? You're just going to be missing. We want you to be here, but hey, we're moving forward. We don't have time to play. I want Jesus to come. What about you? Now, how many of you are serious about doing God's work? Don't worry about what your, what your character stands right now. You know, when you commit to God, when you commit to him, guess what? Every single problem that you have is his to handle. You get this letter in the mail talking about eviction. You get this letter in the mail talking about we're going to turn your lights off because you put God first and return your tithe faithfully and your offering faithfully. Then you can just simply say, Lord, here's your bill. He's never let his children down who put him first. And in this case, God wants us to put him first in his work. There's people, I can tell you now, I get a lot of phone calls during the week, people calling me left and right talking about, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. As it says in Revelation 3.10, hold fast that you have that no man take your crown. Somebody will take your place. God's numbers, God's army will not be diminished. He has a people that's going to do his work. He's coming. Ready or not, here he comes. We see the signs there on the television and in the news and the internet foolishness. We know he's coming. But how serious are we? It's not about just playing church. It's good to come and worship together and fellowship together. But we must be about our father, father's business seven days a week. And that's what this is all about. So brothers and sisters, if you have a heart for God and you want to do his will and you want to be faithful and you want to go forward, you want to be a part of this evangelism vision and you're serious about this thing, and even if you're not a member of this church, you want to be a part of this, come on. Yeah, I'm a sheep stiller. Yeah. And you want prayer that you will stay steadfast and you want your decision to make that stand and have it sealed that you're going to do it. I want to pray for you, so please stand. You plan to be a part of evangelism. You plan to be about, about, about God, God's business. Even if you're not a member, you plan to be a part of this thing. See, I don't want to go through all of those technical things and talking about political things. Oh, you're not a member. You can't work with us. No, you can work with me. If you got a dog that'll help you pass out tracks, bring him. Come on and say amen. Brothers and sisters, we're dead serious about this thing. Now, there's someone under the sound of my voice. You know that God has called you for such a time as this. You want to commit to doing God's work? You're standing for that. Yeah, that's great. But then there's someone under the sign of my voice. You've taken Bible studies. And yet you've now taken a position that you don't want to even, you know, go forward. It's more than just getting baptized. It's more than just claiming a profession of faith. It's about going forward to be a part of a movement, a church that's going to deliver the light that you've learned in Bible studies to go forward and do his work. This is what it's about. So if you've taken Bible studies in preparation for baptism and you have not taken your stand to do so, I want to give you the call and the opportunity right now to do so. Don't worry about who's looking. Church, I want you to pray. So you know who you are. And there's several of you. There's several of you in this congregation. I know. And God is calling you to take your stand to be in the next baptism. You've already studied. You got more in your head right now that God has called you to understand and know. It's time for you to take that, not just to know, but to share it with others. But be a part of this mission and movement. And you want to take your stand today, God is calling you. Take your stand right now. Come down this aisle. Give me your hand. Give God your heart. Signifying that you want to go ahead and go forward in baptism or profession of faith. There's one. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. I know that there's, there's at least one, but there's several in this congregation. See, I'm in communication with a lot of you guys during the week. I know what's going on. A lot was going on. Not everything, but enough. And God sends me on a mission to know these things because I'm here to help all of us, unite all of us, to finish God's work and to work with everybody. Everybody's not the same, but you're special in our sight, especially in God's. Every one of us is valuable in this church. Nobody will be left out. And you can see that from what we presented today. So let's go forward. So God is calling you right now. You know God has spoken to you, but guess what? When you make a decision for God, the devil will whisper in your ear and say, you don't have to do this. You can do this some other time. You can do this some other place. But today, if you hear his voice, heart not your heart. I'm making the call for those that want to take their stand and be baptized. You've been studied with already. The second call is this. 
you want to rededicate your life to Jesus and going forward and doing his work, you want to take your stand and do that today? Rebaptism for the next baptism? I want you to just simply raise your hand where you are. Raise your hand where you are. My brother, you raise your hand. Whoever raised their hand, I'd like for you to come forward. I want to pray for you. This is for rebaptism. This is for rebaptism. Baptism after studying, baptism, rebaptism. Now, profession of faith. You've already been baptized, but you learned this truth, and now you want to take your stand and join this movement, this church that has a special place for you. You want to take your stand. Raise your hand, wherever you may be. Take your stand. Take your stand. Take your stand. And even when the prayer is prayed, that doesn't mean the appeal is over. You may see me afterwards. You may see me afterwards because the appeal continues until Jesus comes. Amen. Now, church, I want you to pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family you represent. And pray for those you know that needs to give their heart to Jesus before it's forever too late. As I lift up the prayer right now, please pray. And if you're planning to take your step for baptism or profession of faith, please come forward and see me before we leave today. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God of heaven, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor and glory for all things. And today was simply a message to remind us, oh God, you've gifted all of us with talent and gifts. And it's for the purpose of finishing your work. And Lord, you know our hearts, but it's so scary to see. It's so hard to save people. The devil can raise up a sign with all kind of foolishness and we break our necks to come forward. But when you make the call for salvation, when you make the call for surrendering of sin, we hesitate. And you said in your word, to whom you yield yourselves to obey, you are their servants to whom you obey. God of heaven, we plead the blood of Jesus upon this church, its members, its visitors today. Give them no rest nor peace, those who have not decided for you until they decide for you or forever not decide for you. You're coming soon and you're asking us, Lord, to be ready when you come. And one way to get ready is to be about your business. So we ask now for forgiveness of sin and trespasses and iniquities. And we thank you, O Lord, for acknowledging our standing today for our commitment to the mission. Seal these decisions. And Lord, whatever it takes, save us even from ourselves. So we thank you, O God, for hearing our prayer. And whatever we fail to ask, please fail not to grant. And as we conclude, O God, pour out your Holy Spirit and continue to keep charge and take charge. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen and amen. Please be seated. Please remain standing for the closing hymn.